What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video on my rally build. So today we're going to be changing some brake pads to some full on race pads as well as getting rid of the old fluid that's in here because it's just like AutoZone junk uh, and actually throwing in some high heat uh, racing application brake fluid. Uh, that way we don't have to worry about as much brake fade uh, because that's definitely going to become an issue at our next rally. So these are the pads that I actually went with. So these are some Porterfield R4 racing brake pads. Now the way that I actually chose these pads in particular are because of the application that I actually have for the car. Uh, now if I wanted to only rally cross, autocross, these pads would be terrible for that. Uh, so they need quite a bit of heat in them until they actually start performing well. Uh, but they have a very high heat threshold, but they kind of have a sweet spot where they actually start to work. Uh, so when you choose brake pads, make sure that you choose them based off your application, not just whatever the best racing pad is or the most expensive pad, uh, because you can spend a bunch of money on your pads, uh, but if it's the street car, autocross car, rally cross car, whatever, uh, if it doesn't see enough heat input in the brakes, they're not actually gonna work to their best performance uh, once they actually start getting heat in them and they're gonna eat your rotors and uh, they're not gonna last as long as well because they're not in their optimal temperature range. Now, this is a pretty important mod before the next rally that we're going into, which is STPR, so it's pretty high speed, fast flowing stages, on pretty tight, twisty roads, and I'm a heavy left foot breaker uh, when I'm actually driving uh, through rally stages. Uh, so I definitely need to have some good pads that'll be able to take quite a bit of heat input, even though this is a slow car, it's not the most heavy of a car too. Um, it's still going to see quite a bit of heat in the brakes. Uh, so I definitely don't want to worry about that. So that's why we're going to some really good fluid in there as well. So this is some racing brake fluid that I've got. I've got a few containers of this. Uh, and that'll make a big difference because we just have crappy AutoZone fluid in there right now. And we don't want to deal with that. And sorry for the dog barking across the street. Nice little chihuahua uh, that someone let out and now is barking like it's a big dog. Um, but yeah, we need to get started on this. These calipers are super easy to change the brake pads on though, um, because it's literally like you pull like a little retaining pin and then two pins come out, old brake pads come out, and then new ones slide in. Might have to compress the piston in the brakes a little bit uh, to be able to fit the thicker new pads in there, but we shouldn't have to take them off, uh, which really will speed up the process by quite a bit. So looking at the caliper, trying to hold the light in, uh, the camera at the same time so you can actually see it. You see these uh, two tiny pins right here and uh, right here. So these are what are actually holding in the brake pads right now. Uh, they go right through the holes in the brake pad. Uh, and then they just have this little retaining pin in the back. You literally just push in and I might not be able to do it with one hand without a tool. Yeah, you just have to like push in a little indent right there uh, and then it pops right out. And then once you do that, these little push pins will come right out, slide out the brake pads just like that. And new ones go in um, as long as you have enough room with the piston. And voila, that's it. Uh, super easy to change on these things. It's awesome. I'll probably clean this rotor to make sure that there's no weird grease or anything on there. Uh, probably took about five minutes to change those though. That's what I love about these calipers. Really worth it to upgrade to these things because they fit under rally wheels. Uh, they look cool, which is another plus. Uh, super easy to find decent brake pads for and um, definitely uh, super easy to change them as well, which is all big pluses. So. We're gonna knock out the other ones real quick. They're all just as easy, same style. Uh, so we should be done fairly quickly and then we'll be able to start bleeding the brakes again, which I'll need my wife's help for, her favorite part to do on the car. She's helped me so many times with it. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll knock this out real quick and then move on to something else. Oh yeah, and don't mind my massive mess of this huge oil puddle underneath the car. We did the uh, oil cooler earlier and uh, so you should go check out that video. Uh, if you haven't already, go watch that. Uh, but we spilled oil everywhere. Uh, we're gonna move on to this side now, though, and show her how to do this. Cause uh, she, I think she's changed brake pads for I don't remember. Um, she'll feel really accomplished on these though, cause they're so easy to do. We're gonna have to take the caliper off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little pin thing back here. Yeah. So you have to push down on this and pop it out of the hole. See the hole it's in. Mm -hmm. You have to push down so the lock will uncatch and then push it out of the hole. And then these pins come out, so give it another push. And pull it out. And then just stick one of those in the 
bones and the brake pads pulled out. So, because they're new pads, we have to push in the piston. So, so just get the pad against them. Because the pistons like self adjust to the old brake pad, so as they get worn, um, that way you don't have free play in your pedal. Easy. It's usually not that easy on cars. It's just these calipers. Oh. But we'll let everyone believe that it's that easy. Second side is done, so we can move on to the rears now. She's got to pull off the rear wheels. Uh, she knocked that out. That took seven minutes, even with showing her how to do it. Um, that's just how easy these things are. It's super simple. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the rear. Knock these out. Literally like a 30 minute job of changing brake pads. Not even, if you had all the wheels off, it'd be like 15 minutes if you were more proficient than I am at doing this. one so they're all done now uh, we can move on to switching out the brake fluid like I said quick and easy literally took 30 minutes to do uh, with taking brakes and all that kind of good stuff now to get the fluid out uh, I am going to pull as much of this fluid out as possible uh, as you can see the brake fluid is pretty full right now because I did just switch it out uh, or not switch it out but I did just bleed the brakes not that long ago so it is pretty full uh, so we're gonna stick something in there uh, vacuum out as much as I can uh, so I can completely empty this and as long as I don't push the brakes no air is going to get into the system uh, so we're going to empty it as much as we can and then put the good fluid in and the reason we do that uh, is to try to get as much of that fluid out now um, that's just less fluid that I'll actually have to go through the system so then I'll only have to drop it to like a little bit below the min line with the good fluid uh, before I know that all of the fluid should be the good stuff uh, and all the old crappy Dot 3 AutoZone Special will be out of there. Um, we won't have to worry about that anymore. And to pull this out, I'm just gonna be using this pump that I have. It's kind of a long tool for the job and we can break fluid everywhere already uh, or whatever fluid is in here uh, because this is more for like putting fluid in for like a transmission or a diff uh, with like oil, uh, but it'll work. It's the only suction thing that I have, but a turkey baser works really well because you can kind of shove it in around all the stuff that's inside your master cylinder uh, reservoir. Uh, but this will work, this will get most of it out at least. And yeah, just got the other end. Going to my catch can, uh, to try to get as much of the fluid as I can. I'm not launching all over my garage like I usually do. And that's about as much as I can get out. Not very much, but uh, it'll save me some pumping. And uh, so yeah, we'll go slowly, pump, Try to get most of it out, pour the new stuff in, pump some more. Uh, we'll definitely do quite a bit more because of the fact that I didn't get most of it out and I don't want it to mix with the old crappy stuff. So we'll just flush out a bunch of it out of the system. So a lot of pumping and a lot of cracking loose on the bleeders. I could hook up a vacuum pump to it, but it's not really worth it right now. So we'll just do it the old fashioned way and I'll go grab my wife because uh, that's the only way to do it. Go ahead and pump. 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 Well, the brakes are knocked out. I got fluid everywhere though, because I kind of did a bad job of catching it, uh, which really sucks. So there was already oil everywhere, so now it's just even worse. Um, I am going to, I think, throw the wheels back on the car, push it out of the garage real quick. I kind of wanted to leave it up in the air because it does take so long to get it up in the air. Uh, but it's not worth it to try to work under the car with that much oil. Uh, I need to clean it up. 
uh, especially because I'm going to have to be welding under there later uh, when I start my next project with a gas tank under there and a big puddle of oil. Uh, just asking for a Darwin Award there. Uh, and I already do some kind of dumb stuff on the channel anyway when it comes to safety, so probably shouldn't do that. So we're going to throw the wheels back on, clean it up a little bit in here, um, make it a little bit more pleasant to work in, try to stay on top of the mess because that's like the worst thing trying to keep this thing somewhat clean in here. Now the brakes are done. I still have to bed them in, um, but we'll talk about that at a later date. You could easily look that up. Uh, it's pretty much, you just do 10 stops from about 60 miles an hour to 10 uh, and slowly increase the braking force to get the brakes good and hot. But it's pretty easy. You definitely don't lock up the brakes with it. It's like a 60 to 80% braking force. Uh, so if you don't have ABS, you're not locking up your ABS uh, or with ease locking up the wheels. Uh, and you should be pretty good at threshold braking if you have a race car like this and you've ever just felt like trying to stomp on the brakes. Uh, so you should have an idea of, of kind of when you're going to push too hard and your wheels are going to lock up and cause an issue. Uh, now if you have sticky tires like I do, you can push a lot harder. Uh, but if you're running on street tires, it's definitely going to break. Your wheels looks a little bit easier, but you can kind of tell. Uh, once you get used to the pedal feel, when the brakes are actually going to kind of lock up. Um, and it kind of takes locking them up a few times to actually realize that though. But, like I said, throw the wheels on, clean this mess up a little bit before it gets too bad. I really don't know why, uh, but the camber on the front wheels looks pretty crazy right now. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe like that, you might be able to. Um, I don't know, it looks like I didn't mess with it. I messed with toe, which would mess with it a little bit, but shouldn't affect it that much. But it looks like it's sitting at like five degrees or something. Uh, it was set at like two. And both sides look like they're definitely cambered in quite a bit. But anyway, this is what we're on to now. If you believe me, this was clean uh, like three days ago. Well, the floor's still kind of greasy, and it's not the cleanest it's ever been in here, but I, it's a lot better than it was. So we can at least pull the car back in right now, start getting back to work on it. I don't want to spend all night cleaning the garage just to make it dirty again. And I've got so much to do to the car this weekend, but uh, it is a good thing that we got the brakes done at least. So, we got this thing back in the air. Uh, now the next thing that I'm gonna work on, I wanna throw some more roll cage padding in here, some of the SFI stuff that I've got up here um, on this bar right here. So I'm probably gonna come down from here and then go up with it, cause it's not really needed down there. This is so it eliminates any need for adding pads or anything when we actually get to service or scrutineering uh, to get this thing approved at STPR. Uh, cause this is all SFI padding that is required in certain areas, anywhere your head can touch. And right here is pretty close to your head. Uh, so I'd probably want to, uh, add it there just in case. Uh, so I'll probably come halfway down, like I said. And then for this area, I think I'm going to add some normal foam padding. And that's literally just to protect our elbows. Uh, cause I'm really tired of smacking my elbow on this, getting in and out of the car. Uh, I know my wife has done it a lot on her side as well as like knees uh, getting in and out of this. That's probably all I'll do uh, once I get those in. So I'm gonna go grab them uh, and then start zip tying them all in. So here's the SFI stuff. Uh, this is like the lower profile one. Um, I do have some of the thicker stuff up there right now. This passes the same. I don't, geez, everything's like blown out from my LED lights. Lighting in the garage is kind of bad. Uh, but anyway, so you'll see it does have a sticky back. I don't recommend just using that sticky back. Uh, you gotta use zip ties to hold it on too because this won't stay. Uh, but it's something there, it'll like help hold it so you can zip tie it, but that's about it. Uh, and we're pretty much gonna do something like that. Nothing here. 
So, and to cut it, uh, I just use a fine tooth hacksaw like this and pretty much just try to cut it as cleanly as possible. This seems to cut it the best because it is just foam and uh, it doesn't do the cleanest of cuts, but it definitely does better than some of the other stuff that I was looking at trying to cut it with. So, this is where I'm sticking with. side is done. Took forever to remove that sticker. Probably took longer than mounting it. So I got to throw one more zip tie in there. That's then it's fully done. Uh, but definitely, I think it looks better too. Uh, kind of breaks up those huge gussets that I made, uh, which I don't think they look too bad. But I don't know, they kind of look weird. Um, but I'm definitely happy that we'll be a little bit more comfortable in the car. Uh, I know her elbow definitely rests against this as well as mine, uh, which her elbows are a little bit closer together because she's holding notes. Um, but this is good. One less thing to worry about, hopefully. I'm still bringing some of these pads with me uh, to scrutineering because I haven't gone through ARA tech before, uh, so we never know. Might have to add some more. I really can't see of any bars that could possibly need it now. Uh, so it should be good, unless they like are weird about like these couple inches that I've got randomly in places, but hopefully not. It shouldn't be. I think I'm probably gonna call it for the night, so that's probably all I'll do in this video. I don't need to drag it out. Knocked out the brakes really quick. Glad I got that done. Um, and a little stuff like those pads, always good to get done as well. Car's slowly starting to come a little bit more together with a lot of the little stuff that I've always wanted to do to it and never really had time because we're finally getting to that point where we can start modifying it a little bit more rather than just uh, doing the basics to get this thing on the road. So. That's cool. I'm glad to be on to that stage and hopefully we can keep that going. Um, we don't break it during the next rally to where we have to kind of repeat everything again. Uh, I still have a bunch of little things that I want to add to it, uh, like pockets in the doors, because um, we have like no places to keep like a phone, wallet, uh, or anything like that. I need to add a place that we can store water. Um, I think I'm going to get like a cooler with latches on it or like a like a dry slash cool tackle box type thing. Uh, it's kind of for like fish uh, and probably mount it somewhere in the back. That way you can keep like food and water in there uh, and keep it cool while we're driving because that's one of the worst things is you do a super long section um, and then you gotta hurry up and get the car back. I don't have a crew so I have to do all the work when I get to service so most of the time I'm not eating and I forget to even grab anything. Uh, so if it's in the car with me and once we like leave service and we're in like the paddock to regroup, that would be a good time to eat. Um, but I always forget food when that happens. So it'd be nice if I had a cooler in there and some water. Um, probably rig up something so I can hook up like a camelback bladder to it too. Uh, that way we don't have to have a bunch of water bottles in the car. But uh, yeah, these are all stuff for another day. I'll stop rambling about it, but I uh, appreciate you guys watching. If you made it this far, let me know. I always like to know who actually makes it this far into my videos, because uh, I know it's not many of you, but I appreciate you guys watching anyway. Uh, so yeah, stop rambling, stop making it longer. I'll see you guys. Make sure you go watch my other videos and uh, subscribe and stay tuned for next week with uh, whatever we got going on. There's my attic pull string.